Hello everyone, how's it going? My name is Dan the Tutor. Today I'm going to tell you everything you need to know about DC circuits. We're talking about resistors in parallel and series connected to a battery. Very simple stuff, and at the same time, very complicated because you've probably never seen this before, the class you're taking right now. It's, it's a very interesting topic within physics. Personally, it's my favorite thing in all of electricity and magnetism is this stuff, DC circuits, because I think it's like a brain teaser. And so before we get to any problems, I need to lay out everything you need to know, all the equations, all the concepts, and then we'll look at some problems. So the first thing we'll talk about is when resistors are in series. That's going to look like this in a circuit. It's going to be two resistors next to each other. By the way, you can also have resistors in series even if there's, let's say, a 90 degree right turn like this. Because what I want you to think of when you think of series, I want you to think about if you're a car driving down this road, this circuit, you only have one road you can go down. There's not two roads, there's not two paths, there's only one road, and that's what series is. And if you do have resistors that are in series, then what we would say is that the total resistance, our total, is equal to R1 plus R2 plus however many resistors you have in series. You just add them up normally you'll see that that is not the same for parallel. Two more things we need to know is that the voltage is going to sum. In other words, the voltages added together equals the total. So like for instance, if I have V1 here and V2 here, then the total voltage is V1 plus V2. And then for current, current is going to be the same. So if I wanted to know the current here and here, I1 and I2, those currents are going to be the same because like we said before, you have one road to go down, there's only one current that there could possibly be in all the resistors in series. So these are the first three things we need to know. This is all for series. And now let's talk about what we do for parallel, resistors in parallel. So first of all, resistors in parallel will look like this. In other words, there's two roads you can go down to find these resistors. And for parallel, the equations are a lot more annoying, specifically for the total resistance. You write 1 over R total equals 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over however many resistors you have. Believe me, I know how annoying this is, but we're going to do some examples and it's not going to be too bad. Now for the voltage and the current, what we're gonna find is that they just switch. In other words, the voltage is the same for resistors in parallel, and the current will sum up to the total. And I think current is easier to explain because if I have some total current, I total, and you have two branches, two roads you can go down, well then I1 and I2 must add up to I total. The reason why the voltages are the same is because let's say you have some voltage here, 10 volts, and you have another voltage at this end of the circuit, zero volts, then the voltage V1 and V2 must both be 10 minus zero, so they both must be 10 volts. So that's my justification for why voltage is the same and currents sum up to the total. And that's everything you need to know in terms of series versus parallel. Now the only other thing, there's two more things we need to know, and that first one is probably the most important equation in all of DC circuits, and that's Ohm's law. Ohm's law says V equals I times R. It's the most famous equation in all of DC circuits. The voltage is equal to the current times the resistance. Now there's two ways you can use this equation. The first way is you can say that the whole circuit, in other words, what we're saying is the voltage of the battery which is almost always the voltage supply, is equal to the current coming out of the battery times the resistance, not coming out of the battery, but the total resistance in the circuit. So in other words, let me scroll up. Back here when we said that, hey, the total resistance in series is this, the total resistance in parallel is that, you can add them together. Sometimes you have to combine series and parallel in the same problem. We'll talk about how to do that too. But at the end of the day, you need a total resistance. And then that is this Ohm's law equation for the whole circuit. 
alternatively, you can just do it for one resistor. You can do Ohm's law for one resistor as well. Let's say you want to do it for resistor R1. Let's just make up R1. Then the voltage across resistor 1 is equal to the current across resistor 1 times the value of resistor 1. 20 ohms, let's say, hypothetically. And of course, you can do this with, you know, V2 equals I2 times R2. You can do it with as many resistors as you have. But the first thing you need to do is determine which one are you doing. Are you doing it for the whole circuit or one resistor? If you want my advice, do the whole circuit first. That's usually what we want to do when we solve DC circuits. We want to use Ohm's law for the whole circuit. Finding the total resistance, so that's probably going to involve a lot of combining resistors. And then after that, step two is you look at each individual resistor to find whatever you're solving for. That's typically the strategy we use for solving DC circuits. And then the last thing we need to know is power. Now the cool thing is there are three equations for power and they're all the exact same thing. The first equation I have is power equals V times I, voltage times current. Then you can use the equation V equals I times R to replace either of your variables, V or I. And then that's how you derive these two equations, power equals I squared times R and power equals V squared over R. All three of these equations work depends on what you have in the problem. Some are easier than others. Because let's say you already know the current and the resistance, you'd want to use the middle equation. Or whatever you have, that's the one you'd want to use. Now once again, you can either do this for the whole circuit, in other words, the voltage and current coming out of the battery, because batteries don't really have resistance. I mean, technically they do, but we're not going to talk about that right now, that's too advanced. Or you can look at it for an individual resistor. And we can find the power for either the whole circuit or the power for each individual resistor. And by the way, if you add the powers of each individual resistor, it's gonna add up to the whole circuit anyway. And so that's it for the explanations. In my next series of videos, I will now be looking at some problems about DC circuits. So stay tuned and I'll see you then.